Hello everyone, my name's Lost and welcome back to Let's Game Maker. Um, today we're going to have a look at um, spawning mobs and power-ups randomly across the dungeon. Um, we're going to be looking at locking the doors so that once we're in a room with like monsters and stuff we can't get out um, until we've killed them all. Um, and yet the reason I've got the game up is just to demonstrate what the final product, or at least in terms of game mechanics, could look like. Um, so let's just explore a little bit and I'll show you some of the mechanics in place. So. There you go, here's, here's a power up room that's spawned a couple of power ups that we can choose from. Let's just go for one because I think one's a little bit overpowered. And as you see, here's a mob room, and the doors have now locked, so we cannot get out until we've killed everything, at which point the doors unlock, and then we can keep going. So there's another power up room. Um, and a mob room. Now, I will be honest, like the, the generation that I've set is, is like very random. Um, so, I mean, if you was having like a proper game, then you, you probably want to tweak it, so, you know, um, depending on what you actually want. But let's just reset this, and we'll have another look through, and see how it's generated this time. Um, so, yeah, there we go. There's a mob room. Sometimes they can be really boring and not spawn any mob rooms. Um, so, you know, we could probably do with working on the percentages and stuff. But um, I'm not too worried about that. I just wanted to show you um, what the final product could look like. Um, so here's our god mode um, tiers. Um, well, the, actually, the, this was quite a quite a good one. This one. Um, but yeah, let's just check the final couple of rooms. And yeah, there's nothing. So there we go. Now let's um, let's have a look. So I've actually done this a little bit different. I, I coded this last night um, because what was happening was as I was adding. Um, new code to this. I was creating more bugs than features I was doing. Like every feature that I was trying to add created a bug. Like I had all the zombies um, massing up and getting stuck in each other. Um, so I've, I've coded this and I've annotated everything. So let's go through it. So first open up your player object, go to the create event and in the code. Now the only difference in here is we have I've set a new variable called global damage and it equals one stout. But it's going to depend on the power up that we have. So okay that. Now the next, I don't believe there's any changes here. No, the next change is in the step event. So what you're going to do here is I've just added a debug key, Q, um, and it'll just restart the game so you don't have to keep compiling it every time you want to generate the dungeon just to see how it's looking. Um, now down here, um, if you look, if you see here, I've just said to replace what was previously here with this. Now what was there previously was it'll say if place meeting um, and then it'll say zombie. Just delete that and then copy this in its place. Um, instead it'll make the zombie be able to attack us when it's in a distance of like 10 pixels from us. Now the reason we're doing that is, I mean I'll have to show you the zombie event and I'll get there shortly, um, but it's just gonna help with pathfinding um, and it's gonna yeah it, it basically just works better doing it like this just from the way that I've programmed it anyway. Um, now let's scroll down a bit and we're going to get to here and all I've done here is if we get the power up one we're not changing, we're not setting the global damage because there's three tiers so that's like three damage. Um, in power up two we're setting it as three because it's like one big one and in the in the god mode I've set it to half a damage for each one that hits. Um, so yeah, that, that is the player done. Now let's go into the um, zombie and there's nothing new in the create event but there is in the step event. Now um, let's let's go through this. So at the top I have a sort of a new AI code to wake up the objects, the, the zombie sorry, when the player is close or the zombie is being shot at by us. So um, delete what you had here previously and just um, copy this in. So we're saying if it, if can attack is true and distance to the object's player is less or equal to 500 pixels or the distance to the tier is 200 pixels so you know basically if it's been shot or if it can see us like quite fairly close to it then it'll start um, moving towards now it, we used to have false here I've now set it to true again it's just going to help with pathfinding and um, dodging other objects um, in in here um, this is going to prevent the zombies from getting stuck to each other and or, yeah, getting stuck in each other and just acting really weirdly. Um, so you can just add that in. Now in the um, 
collision with the tier, all I've done is below bounce offset um, the global damage here. So HP minus equals global damage. Um, and if you see here where we've got um, if place meeting with object spit, it used to be here. I've just moved it below the bounce. Um, and the last change in here is, as you can see here, I've said removed anti stuck with the spitter. So before here, it would have said else if place meeting with um, spitter, and then it done that. We've just got rid of that because we don't need it anymore. Um, because obviously, because we have that to true, it's going to dodge the spitter anyway. So that kind of works. So we'll okay that. Now, if you go to the spitter, there's only one one change in here, and that is um, in the in the collision with the T. We said HP minus equals global damage, and that's it for that. Um, now the next um, the next change comes in the doors, but before we start looking at the doors, we're gonna set it so that it can be locked. So we need a sprite for that. So open up your SPR door sides and you can set the um, the Y coordinate there to 40 just so the doors will be centralized in the rooms and click edit sprite and I've added a sprite there um, that's going to be a locked door and the way you do that is you press that plus button there and you double click it and then you just you fill it whatever color you want so that's our unlocked state and our locked state and I've just done the exact same for the sprite top door except this time the X is 40 and as you can see there is our image so let's have a look at the code now so if we go to object door top and in the create event I've set image speed equals 0 and image index equals 0 so image speed basically means um, how fast the um, images as you saw there go between each other so let me just show you so if you go to edit sprite and go to show preview, you'll see that it's just flashing. Um, when you set when you set the image speed to zero, it means that it's not going to change the image basically. Um, so yeah, just write those two in there, and image index is obviously the very first image. Now if we go to the step event, um, the difference here is that we've put um, if image index equals zero and place meeting then you know we'll we'll do this we'll go through it um so the image zero is going to equal the door unlocked basically and that is essentially the same for all of them um so just that code there that you want in and and the create event but just for consistency's sake i will just show you show you all of them just in case you haven't written this code previously and the last one. There we go. So now th there's more code that I've added in the generate rooms. Um, but first, you might want to make these three blank objects here. Um, they don't need sprites, just create three objects, call them this. Now, into the generate rooms, if you go into the create event, uh, oh, actually, sorry, there is no changes in the create event. But in the step event, um, I've changed a bit. So let's have a look at that. Oh, let's not make it that big. So um, to start with, I've put a new random here and I've got run tech. Now that's going to randomly generate the room. So between one and two, uh, zero and two. So it's going to either be a mob room, a power room, and assume to be boss room. But I'm going to make it so that it can only be one of those. And it's going to be right at the end. Um, so down here if you remember this code um, after the room's been created you're going to add what room it's going to be so if run type 0 it's just going to be empty I'm not going to do anything if it's 1 then we're going to create the mob room in the very center of the room that's what those coordinates there are and that's the same with the power up um, now I'm just going to scroll down here so you can keep pausing it and adding the code um, yeah, there you go. I've just done it to each. It's just the exact same code, but in each of the sections. There we go. So now, if you go into the mob, the mob generation room, and if you look in the create, we're going to say randomize. Um, so it'll actually make it proper random, and we're going to say 
this and this is going to generate between one and uh, zero and four um, monsters. And using this variable to say if we're finished spawning, and that's the amount spawned. And obviously, um, we don't actually need this variable. I'm just I've just put it for demonstration purposes so that you can see exactly when the doors are locked and unlocked. Um, so that might be helpful. So in the step event now, we're going to say um, if spawned is false. So if we're still allowed to spawn stuff, then and if the distance to the object. Um, if the distance to the player, sorry, is less than 400 pixels, then it will start to create the monsters in the room. Okay, so run monster is just which monster it can be, and obviously it can either be the zombie or the spitter. So if it's zero, we're going to do a zombie. If it's one, we're going to do a spitter. Um, and essentially, we're saying here, um, if the amount which get plus, which gets plus every time we create one, um, then um, if the amount is equal or bigger than the ra the random amount which we set in the create event, um, then spawn equals true, so we can't spawn anymore. So the logic there is quite solid and um, it just works. Then further down, this is where we lock and unlock the doors. So we're going to say um, nearest enemy. I'm going to say if distance to the nearest enemy is less than five. Now I've gone overboard there. You don't actually need to do that, but it doesn't really make a difference because um, because when we get in the room, that's the only time that the uh, monsters spawn anyway. So, so when they're spawned, if the distance to the enemy is less than five thousand, then the doors are going to start locking. So we're going to say, with now remember we've already set the image speed to zero, so they don't going to they're not going to change all the, all the time. Um, so we're saying doors locked. If you remember, we don't actually need that. I'm just doing it to show you. Then with object door top, we're going to change all the um, image index to one so that we cannot go through them anymore and then else so if there's no more enemies in range then um, it's going to unlock the doors again um, so that that actually works quite well and now we're going to go to the power up room and just to create event for this one and it's just going to randomize um, a power up that we can get and, and then I've created a boss object but I've not done anything yet and that's going to be for the final episode I think. So that's pretty much everything so with that said let's just have one more look at this because th there is one bug actually um, that does occur and that's it, well if it happens I'll, I'll demonstrate and if it doesn't happen then I'll just talk about it so let's just have a little explore. Um, so as you can see here it's th this actually is a good example of what I was talking about. As you saw there it um, spawn zombies, but it also spawned a power up. Now that shouldn't be possible because it's only supposed to spawn um, one thing in one room. You see, so either it's going to be a mob room, a power up room, an empty room, or you know the last one's going to be a boss room. But it should only be able to spawn what spawn one in each room. Now the reason it can't is because um, if you look at the generate rooms. Now previously, I, I thought this couldn't happen um, because I thought I'd solved it with this, but. I was quite far far off actually. So I've said there that you know if you generate a room um, up, then so imagine you've got your center room. You generate a room up, right? Then it can't generate down again because we've set that to true. So it's not able to overwrite that. But <laughs> what can happen, and I didn't really look at look at this, is that if you generate a room, so you've got your starting room, you then generate a room up. It then generates a room to the left. It then generates a room to the right. At uh, the down, sorry. Then we're saying we can't go back up, but we can go any other way. So then it, it goes to the right, and it's then overwritten the the room that was there. Um, now I'm not going to fix that because I, I'm not that bothered about it because it actually makes the the um, um, the dungeon a bit more random, so you can branch a little bit. Um, but the the way that you would fix that if if you want to, um, you would say if place meeting. Um, uh, no, no, no. You need to say if not place meeting here with um, Gen X, Gen Y object room. So that there will fix it. But like I said, I'm I'm not too bothered about it. Um, it doesn't really. It's not really that much of a big problem. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching. And in the next episode. 
Um, it's going to be a bit more of a, a fun one, I guess, where I'm just going to add some graphics to the game, um, and I'm going to get them off. I think it's open 2 dart or something dot com. Um, I'm not going to create them myself because even when I do, they're, they're still turn out to be totally shit. So I'm just going to um, get some graphics on just just so that we can see how a, a finished game might look or you know something like that. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.